Behind me, I have an International Polestar with a Max Force engine. Many of you know this engine, the Max Force engine, because it's an engine that is very controversial up to date. And it is not because it is an engine that is super good. It is because it's an engine that has been so problematic all this time because it has a system that is very complex in many ways. It is an expensive machine to repair and it requires special tools to actually work on it. So it is overall an engine that is very hard to work and almost impossible to work yourself if you are an owner operator and you want to save some money by doing some labor on it because the majority of components of this engine are very hidden inside between some other components and to remove one component you have to remove another component anyway this is another episode of fate and I do different explanations about different stuff today I have the chance to review this Max Force engine and if you wonder if I work on these Max Force engines I usually don't the reason why I have this Max Force engine is because someone brought it to me from another shop someone that I know having some problems about some other stuff and yeah I decided to have him it's already fixed ready to go but I took the opportunity to film this video if you want to contact me ask me anything go to Instagram Francisco Maya YouTube and you know what to do next I said it already many times this engine in general when it comes to mechanical pieces it is um, an okay engine average okay engine because it has problems but it is not like super problematic when it comes to mechanical the problem with these engines are components exterior components then are around the engine and electronic components when I, when I talk about electronic components, I mean stuff with the computer and stuff like that. The problem is that you have to have this specific software that uh, Navistar International requires to have to, in order to access the information on these uh, Maxforce engines. And it's very expensive. And you have to update it every single year, which is very expensive. To me, it is not worth to invest $2,000, $3,000 in a software for these engines if I'm going to see only one engine every one month, it's not even be worth my money. That's the reason why I don't work. To be clear with you, it is, in general, I don't think this engine is the best, but I don't like to work on it because it's a very few engines. It is very, there is not too many Max Force engines. So why I'm going to invest money on something that I won't even, even see? I prefer to say, I don't look at them instead of just trying to get the business on me and then, not having uh, instead having expenses over the engine but anyway um, if you have anything uh, anything good about this engine I mean any any positive information about it I mean I know that many of you you can um, be owners of these trucks and uh, if you have that use the comment section below in your opinion so everybody can know why this engine is positive in your opinion but overall everybody knows that this is an engine that has so many problems recently international developed a new engine that is called a26 that engine is the one that is meant to replace this engine it is just 2020 right now it is a brand new engine for the international lt the newer one the newest international on the highways um, but uh, it is to see how good that engine is going to be compared to this old engine uh, because it uses similar technology but less components which is better because if you have less components that means then you are more likely to have a easy work less labor but uh, international is known because it's very expensive on parts everybody knows that and uh, that makes this engine not very friendly if you are a owner operator or a mechanic too on this side we can see a lot of components but these components are for a meaning it is because international invested so much money to create a different system i remember on 2010 when i was working on trucks i remember then international came with the system that doesn't use the ef 
this is the system. He doesn't use the F because in, at that time I told him uh, International had a very nice system because he doesn't use the EF because I thought the EF was a waste of money in that time because I was not better than what I am right now. But anyway, uh, I thought and this system was very nice because he didn't use that because he used technology to prevent the emissions. So what happens here is then uh, International uses a very different system than the competition. Freilander, Cummins, Volvo and other manufacturers they use the EF because they use the SCR. The SCR is the one that you have after the DPF to reduce the emissions that are uh, uh, made after you know the combustion of air and fuel. International on the other hand they have pre-coolers. This is a pre-cooler and that one on top, this one is another pre-cooler. And the reason why they have two pre-coolers is because they are trying to cool the air as much as they can before going inside the engine. Because if you have less uh, temperature on the air than goes to the intake manifold, you, you most likely are going to have less emissions. And that's the reason why they designed this system. The only problem is that this creates a super complicated system. You can see how everything looks over here. If you are an owner operator, you won't even know where to start to work on this engine. Just to give you an idea, look how the AC compressor looks. See this is the AC compressor on this engine. It is right here. This is the AC compressor. It is super hard to access if you don't have the right tools. I don't think you're going to be able to do it yourself, so I, I don't know if you really want to work on this engine if you have a truck like this. Anyway, uh, in this case, these pre-coolers over here, we have two pre-coolers. These pre-coolers, they use a different cooling system. We have one cooling system over here. This one goes for the engine with this radiator. This radiator is for the engine head and cylinder block and we have this other radiator in front see and this one is connected with a coolant hose then goes all the way to the precoolers over here this system doesn't use an intercooler a cac in the front of the radiator instead use these two precoolers to cool the air as much as they can it is a good system in a way because it prevents the use of DEF by cooling the air, but it makes this engine so hard to work. For example, if you really want to do something like a replace the turbo, you have to remove all these components. If you really want to replace the exhaust manifold, see the manifold goes all the way over there, stuck in it over there. You have to remove these Bosch components, these much components over here, just to access that component, which increases the amount of labor then someone got to put on this engine and increases the amount of uh, money that you're going to spend just in labor, which is really bad i don't really like then you have the other pre-cooler on top this is the last pre-cooler because this is the freeze pre-cooler that then comes from the lower turbo because it has a twin turbo see this one turbo over here then goes on top and there is another turbo down there so it has twin turbos technology and one uh, turbo sends the pressure to this pre-cooler over here and then this pressure goes back to the other turbo on top and the other turbo on top sends the pressure to the other pre-cooler in here. And that's how the temperature gets lower so much. That's the good thing, the benefit of this engine. Then no uses DF, that's the only good thing about it. But other than that, it is not the best engine. And besides all that, we have a EGR cooler over here Then is mounted next to the engine. This is the EGR cooler right here. It goes across the whole thing. And it doesn't look so easy to replace or to work on it, to do anything. It is just so much uh, things, too many components. It, and that's why I say that this engine, it is not bad uh, because of the mechanical components. It is bad because it has so many components that makes this engine super hard to work and super expensive to work. And all these components are not cheap. They're super expensive when you have to replace it and you have to remove them and then you have to replace the gasket and everything and, and increases the amount of uh, money you gotta spend just to do one single job. In, that, in this case, 
Uh, this Max Force is the older version because there is a newer version that uses DEF, the newer, the newer uh, like 2014, 15, they use DEF. They have less components than this one. They have little less components, but it still is complicated to work on those. If we go to the other side, we have less components. You can see we have the computer here for the engine. Uh, we have the entrance from the pre-cooler over here, then goes right to the intake manifold, then is integrated in the head. Alternator, filler cap, the gauge, all gauge. We have the fuel pump over there, some other components, fuel filters and everything, and air compressor over there. So in this size, the engine looks better. But on the other side looks like crap, right? Um, in general, I believe that this engine um, was made not to help the owner operators. This engine was not made to help you as an owner operator. This engine was made to keep the business inside international because something goes bad. You need the software and the software, it is not like you buy it and you can use it without Wi-Fi. You need Wi-Fi to use it. So what you do, you take it to international because they have the software, they have the Wi-Fi and everything. Because if you really want to buy it yourself, you have to spend a lot of money just to buy this software. So if you really want to do a work, like for example, replacing a hose or something like that, it is so much work just to replace a little hose in between of those uh, um, pre-coolers. So, what you want to do? Send it back to international so they can fix it, so they can keep the business all together. The problem is, over the time, people start knowing that this truck was not the best over the market and start not paying attention to this engine. And that's the reason why international isn't the lowest engines rankings in the United States, because if we have we have a car and we have a uh, Max Force. Between those, they are the really not very common engines over the road. Max Force has the last place and Packard has the upper place because Packard is an engine thing. It is a good engine. It is just the, it is expensive. It, Packard is a better engine than this one. In my honest opinion, I don't really like Max Force. It is not because I think it's a bad engine. It is just because it requires so much expenses to work on it. And if you want to invest so much money on equipment to work on this truck and you won't get your money back, it is not an investment. It is a, it is a expense instead to be an investment. And that's the reason why I don't like this engine overall because as I said at the beginning of the video, I won't work on this truck I won't spend money on this truck to buy equipment just because I want to see one truck and then after that I never. So far, by the time being here, I already saw like two or three Max 4s. I mean, for different problems. But, I mean, it's like over like, what, like seven years already and three Max Force, it doesn't pay anything, right? So that's the reason why I don't invest money on this one. I prefer to stick to the common, which is Cummins or a Detroit, and that's how you wanna make the money, by working on what is common, what you wanna see on masses. On this case, this doesn't see it. But you, in the other hand, you can have a different opinion because you can be a owner operator with a Max Force engine, which you are going to you know, uh, know what could be the benefit of owning one of these and you can share that there on the comments so everybody can know it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to see another engine like this because there is not many engines, Max Force over here in the area, I don't actually like to see them. Only if I have a uh, a, a, a customer, a friend, then it's a, another shop Then I know. That's the only reason why I'm going to see it because it is just too much labor to spend and everything. And later, uh, I understand that people doesn't want to pay the high cost of repairs of this one. So I prefer to stay the way I am. That way I don't have to worry about charging that much or telling the customer how much it's going to be to repair this truck. 
anyway uh, this is just my point of view it is I am not trying to tell you don't buy a truck well, don't buy a max force if you want to buy it go ahead it's your own opinion it's your own money you can do it but I'm just telling you what is the problem with this Basically, there are many common problems on this one, but uh, what was the point of telling you common problems on a Max Force if if you're never gonna buy it? I mean, like, so that's that's the reason why I don't say that. But anyway, it's my point of view. Uh, you have your own opinions. Comment below, and uh, if I have the chance to do another video, I will do it. Uh, if not, well, we at least I did the videos. I wanted to do this video for a long time, and finally I have the chance to do it uh, um, about this engine. I, I will try to do another one for Packard. If I had the chance to have a Packard here, I will do it too because I want to see. As well, as well I want to do one for Volvo. Uh, that way uh, I can do different stuff, different content for all of you. Don't watch the same thing, you know. Um, but uh, I guess this is all. Nothing else to add. If I keep adding stuff, I wanna be repeating myself. So I just leave it like like this, and uh, the rest I leave it up to you. So you can leave all those comments, all those opinions, and everything else that you add experiences with this engine. So you can add everything that wasn't uh, added to this video. Uh, so you can just write it there, and that's how everybody is going to be uh, knowing what you what, what is your uh, honest opinions about it too. Um, if you want to send support to my channel, check the description of the video. I have details how to send support to my channel so I can continue making help helpful videos like this for everybody that wants to see more information. Um, like the video, it's very important. Uh, subscribe to the channel, it's important as well. And thank you for watching.